Okay. Today, we are going to explain our entire travel budget, which is $45,000, which is $123 a day, and we're going to attempt to explain why we have been painfully over budget this entire time we've been traveling. Except for two days. We're two days under budget so far. We don't each have $45,000. We have $45,000 in total, so we each have $22,500. So how do we get that number? So we looked at a bunch of people online who have done this, who have shared their budget um, for a year. And we looked at solo travelers, we looked at couples, and basically there is this huge range. People can travel on $10,000 a year, people can travel on $20,000 a year. Obviously people can travel on like $80,000 yeah. or $100,000 a year. And so we looked at the lower budgets and we saw that people tended to stay in certain regions of the world like Southeast Asia or um, South America. And then we looked at like the higher end budgets and I, don't, I wouldn't even say they were high, but it's just like higher budgets, um, especially the couples budgets and saw like what activities they did, where they went, all that kind of thing. And then we took that all into account and then we took into account like what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go. For example, there were a lot of, not a lot, some bucket list locations we wanted to go to. For example, Norway, very high on Peter's list. New Zealand, very high on both of our lists. Mm -hmm. um, those places are not cheap, and so so we landed on forty five thousand, which and that's worked it. with our that worked like our financial situation. Yeah. Of course, like it worked with our savings and all of that yeah. kind of thing. Okay, next, I wrote down notes so I wouldn't forget because it's not organized. Like we didn't plan very much ahead except for these notes. But anyways, what is not included? So what's not included in our budget is credit card annual fees. We have our phone bills and health insurance. Those are the main three things that are not included in our budget of $45,000 for the year. How do we keep track of every transaction? <laughs> he writes it down into so we, Excel. So there's no magical app. There's no, it's just manually keeping track in a Google Sheets by day, by row. Sometimes, usually Peter will update it every day. Um, sometimes he goes a couple days without updating it and what he does is he'll just text himself or he'll text me, which is really annoying because I have all these like random text messages from him with like the cash transactions or whatever yeah. he needs to remember. Okay, now we're gonna go through every single country we've been to so far this year. Um, it's been 17 and we're gonna try to explain why we've been over budget in almost every one. <laughs> all right, the first country was Egypt. Egypt. And we started off hot. We started off acting like our budget was $321 a day instead of $123. To get from Charlotte to Cairo was $906 for two plane tickets. So day one was just really bad in that it's still our highest spend day. Yeah, that's been our highest spend day over the 300 days we've had so far. And I think we were just super excited to like get started and start in such a cool country and we were like, oh whatever, like this won't be a big deal, like it'll all even out later and then later so now we're like oh no like it's not really evening out why don't you explain why we chose egypt first there's not really an explanation I, it was just a really cool place we wanted to start well and we knew we wanted to start either there or in south america and we just ended up going with egypt first we wanted to start off with a bang and so we chose egypt and it was honestly like the coolest thing ever and i'm so glad we started there so we spent 12 days in egypt and our average was 231 dollars and 32 cents we only spent 12 days there? Yep. Okay. Which and is almost double our $123 goal. We did a group trip and with the group trip comes the group aspect. So you have like friends to travel with. Um, you also have a tour guide. You also have your entire itinerary plan. So mm -hmm. you're not doing any work for the trip. You're just like showing up and you're being brought places. And in Egypt, we did have security. I think that's like mandated by I don't know if it's like the US yeah. or like all travel groups in Egypt, but we had security. And so that is why, that's what we paid for basically. And um, that's it, why we went over budget. We were in Egypt for two days before our group trip started and we averaged under $70 a day. Um, I know for a fact you can get meals for $1.25. Um, and we did that. But while we were on our group trip, you also can get meals for $25 or $30. And so that's kind of why. Um, the cost was a little higher. Yeah, I don't but... think that you should be paying $25 to $30 for a meal in Egypt if you're trying to visit on a budget, but... Um, I think since you're in that yeah. tour group, you, you pay the tourist prices kind of thing. Next country is Jordan. We spent 10 days in Jordan, and our average in Jordan was $183.50. Okay, 
and 28 cents. So again, over budget. I think Jordan is one of the higher is it? cost countries yeah. in that region. And so I think that was partially why. Also, we got a car, we got a rental car. Yeah. I think that's also partially why. And I think you'll see that we get rental cars in some places, a, a lot of different places. And if you're on a budget, obviously that is really what kills the budget while you're in that country. But the reason we did it, I mean, obviously we love going over budget, right? But no, the reason we did it is because we wanted the freedom of deciding where we wanted to go like day of, for example, or like we wanted to be on our own schedule and we didn't want to absolutely have to rely on public transportation. Bus schedules. Yeah. yeah. After Jordan, our running average was 209 and 48. So we dropped it by $66 after Egypt. Big progress. And then we flew to Thailand. In Thailand, we spent almost a month there, 29 days. This was the beginning of Southeast Asia, and we're like, oh, we'll get our budget down in no time. Like, it's Southeast Asia. Like, what could we possibly be spending so much money on? And somehow we did. So we were in Thailand for 29 days, and our average was $93, so we were... Under our 123 goal. Yeah. Um, but... It should have been lower. It probably I mean, could have been a lot lower. You can do Thailand on a much lower budget, I think the reason why ours was so high is because we wanted to hit all the regions of Thailand. So we were flying, we could have taken trains, um, but for whatever reason, I think we just packed a ton into what... Um, I went all over the country yeah, too. Yeah, we just packed so much in um, during our time there. And I think, of course, like it's worth it in that we got to do a lot, but of course, we were just spent more than we were hoping to. And, and this is where the slow travel comes into play. If you travel slower, you avoid having to pay for those flights. And then your expensive days are spread out over a longer period of time. Yeah. And you'll notice that we have not been traveling slow. Like I think we've been, and that's why we get, we're literally like every once in a while, we just are so exhausted. Yeah. But then we just like keep pushing through and, we ask ourselves, like, why the heck are we exhausted? We're not working, we're not whatever, but it's because we are traveling at the pace of how we would normally travel if we were to take, like, a week and a half vacation off of work. Like, we are going fast in every country, pretty much, and that's why we're spending so much, yeah. I think. Okay, so after Thailand, our running average is... 143 and 26. We brought our average down $66. Wow, that's actually a lot, because it's the beginning, so there's like fewer days to average it. Next, Vietnam. In Vietnam, we spent 18 days there, and our average in Vietnam was $105.94. So, so not we can, bad. We continue the theme of we're under budget, but we probably still spent more than we should have. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, I think it was because we were just like going so fast and trying to do everything. After Vietnam, we brought our running average down almost $10, to $133. <laughs> okay. Cat got my tongue. <laughs> All right. After Vietnam, we headed to Bali. So in Bali, our focus was, okay, we are getting our budget beneath our goal. When we got to Bali, that was one of the times where like exhaustion just like hit us so hard. That first week we got a villa and we had paid, like we booked it through Airbnb, got it for three nights. It was like $14 or something a night. And it was like a shared room in a villa, but it was really nice. And um, basically we ended up extending it day by day and paying the guy in cash. So we were able to negotiate a lower price than the Airbnb price. And we just straight up chilled that first week, which is so nice. The rest of the time in Bali, we also laid pretty low. We, I don't know, went to the beach and like walked around town and ate good food and all that kind of thing. We did two like big activities there. One was the Mount Ijen hike and the other was a Mount Batur sunrise hike. Yeah, those are really Both cool. worth it too. So worth it. The Mount Ijen one was so cool. They were, the Mount Batur one was fairly cheap. The Mount Ijen wasn't because they transport you to East Java, which is another island. And then it, they give you a place to stay and then you hike with a tour and all that kind of thing. Um, but so worth it. Also, we did the whole like villa negotiation thing again with our second villa. Mm -hmm. um, In a same thing, we paid for the first three nights online and then we kept on extending day by day. I think we were doing two days at a time and they had free breakfast and I think it was like $12 or something. Yeah. And this is definitely like sort of COVID rates still because it was fairly empty. And so I'm sure now it's not that price, but I'm still, I'm sure it's still under $20. I would think. 
and they had the most delicious banana pancakes. We ordered them every morning. They came with our like room rate, which was like twelve dollars, which is insane. Um, G was guest house was the name. G of the was place. guest house, and it was incredible. Spent twenty one days in Bali, and we averaged eighty seven dollars, and then that brought our running average down to one twenty two seventy five. So we had two days under our goal at the end of Bali. We were feeling good, but right after Bali, we went to Norway for a whole month. And that was when everything just started going downhill and we've never recovered since, yeah. but anyways. So in Norway, we spent 30 days and our average in Norway was $178. So let me keep in mind, Norway is not that cheap. We use credit card points to offset a lot of our lodging. So basically our daily average for Norway should have been higher. Um, we, Peter, for some reason, like stockpiled. I mean, I'm glad he did it, but he stockpiled so many points over the five years that he was working and in college too in, and in college i guess um and so we basically had this like large sum of points um from the years and years that peter had been saving up to put towards norway and we wanted to save it for norway we could have put it towards like any country and any kind of expense but we wanted to put it towards norway specifically basically to make us feel better about how like incredibly expensive it was i will say though in norway we were very limited to where we could stay overnight um we did sleep in the car for two nights yep. and it was great i mean we were up north where it was a midnight sun so it was basically bright all night long and um even though that didn't help with our sleep it i don't know i just felt completely safe doing that i don't even know if that's allowed so just if it's not i'm just kidding but um we also stayed in a lot of shared rooms so like one room in someone's house. And I know that's super common um, across Airbnbs, but I think it was in Norway where we got super, super comfortable with doing that. And they were all really, really, really nice rooms, nice bathrooms, even though they were shared, nice families that we lived with. So it was like yeah. a really pleasant experience. And I'm kind of glad that we had that budget to stick to because we probably would have opted for like hotel rooms that were, I don't know, $200 a night. And instead we got to meet like a local family and spend I don't know, $80 a night for a shared room. So it was like it was around nice. 100 but... Oh, okay. Yeah. And we also had to rent a car for most of the time for a good yeah. chunk while we were there, so that drove up the cost. So after Norway, our daily average got jacked up $13. We were at $136 and change after that. It doesn't sound that bad, but keep in mind, like now there's like so many days that are part of the average. So to get it down, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Each under budget you day is worth less to the average. And so after Norway, we went to Czech Republic, specifically Prague. That was the cheapest flight out of Oslo um, in Europe that we were looking at. And this is when we started traveling through Europe really fast. So we were in Prague for a couple of days. Then we went to Hungary for a couple of days. And then we went to Croatia like right away. And so when you're traveling fast, we're like squeezing in all of the touristy activities every single day. So you don't have slow days to offset the high spend days. So... Yeah, those are days are bad. Don't touch the screen. <laughs> Sorry. In Czech Republic, we averaged $189 for five days. Then we went to Budapest, where we averaged $113, sorry, $115 for eight days. And then Croatia for 13 days, where we averaged $176 per day. So after Croatia, our running average was $140 a day, which so that's, is not good. What? $17, $17 over average. budget. Something that we forgot to mention that's not part of our $45,000 budget is miles and points. So leading up to our trip starting, maybe a year out, we started doing like the whole travel hacking thing. We're not like pros at it. Travel hacking. <laughs> we're not, yeah, we're not pros by any means. We kind of just do what we've read online and like the, the low hanging fruit, like the, you know, the, the sign up bonuses that are easy to get. That was about it, the sign up bonuses. Exactly, so at the end of the year, we're gonna go and tally up all the points and miles we use and kind of try to do like a estimate of how much that would have been worth in cash yeah. and so we can tack that on to our total oh another thing that is important that we're transparent about is at this point in our travels we had gained an audience on our social media platforms and so we have been able to get some opportunities uh, not many by any means, but some opportunities in exchange for content. content on our pages or on their pages or whatever. That helped a little bit with um, our budget and stuff. And allowing us to do things that we probably wouldn't have paid 
for with our budget. Our next country, St. Martin. So this came up sort of last minute. Yeah, um, this was so clutch because at this point we were looking at our budget and we were like, this is not gonna end well. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have to start starving ourselves or something. Then we got this project where we were flown out to do um, like this like filming thing and basically over the four days that we were filming and like the two travel days before and after that we had zero expenses because they were all covered and so that really helped out the budget which is very exciting. So with the six no spend days in St. Martin that brought our running average from 140 to $135. Woohoo. <laughs> And after that was Germany. And Germany was another country where we rented a had, car. <laughs> yes, we rented a car, but only for like three days or four days. Or part of it, yeah. But we used um, a lot of our IHG points, so the hotel points. And I don't know why in Germany the IHG hotels were valued at like very low point values per yeah. night. So we just, I don't know, I think we got like eight total nights of like free stays in Germany. We spent 17 days in Germany and our average was $108. This brought our average down to $132. So we $3 decreased to our daily average. That's a laugh. <laughs> so after Germany, we went to Denmark. Specifically Copenhagen. And we did not stay there very long because it's very expensive. I think that was the most expensive like place we'd been to. Well, I guess maybe Norway, but it just killed our budget. Our hotel room was so small, I can't even start to explain. It's like a cruise ship. How, yeah, it was straight up, it looked like a cruise ship. But anyway, so we spent $262 a day while we were in Copenhagen. For and two we, days. And we didn't even like do anything, days. yeah. So why were we in Copenhagen for only two days? Mostly because there was a direct flight from Copenhagen to the Faroe Islands. We definitely want to go back to Denmark one day when we're not on a budget. So after Copenhagen, our running average was... $134. And we flew to the Faroe Islands after this, and we were there for... How many days? Nine days in the Faroe Islands. And the reason we were in the Faroe Islands... I basically begged the tourism board. I straight up begged them to let us um, go there and kind of sponsor us for being there in exchange for our videos. For their page. For their page. Yeah. That is the only reason we were able to go to the Faroe Islands. But of course, not every single cost was covered, so we averaged... $87 a day while we were there, which brought our daily average down to $131.79. Not bad. We're only, what, $9 away at this point? Yeah, $8, $9 away. Then we flew to Turkey. We spent 12 days in Turkey, and this is a country we thought we'd be like, oh, we'll be under budget here. Just like every single other country we visited. And but... we blew past it. We averaged $196 a day in Turkey. And I think- That's actually insane. I didn't even realize we were that high. And it was because we traveled quickly. We were in three places for a short period of time all across the country. And we, I think we, we took a bus to one and we flew the two other times. Yeah. Turkey um, was one of those countries where we acted like it was our one vacation for the year and we just w were like, go, go, go. Also, it was my birthday and I don't think it was we did this because of my birthday, but it, it just, just happened, happened to, be to be my be. birthday. So lucky for Peter, he could just count that as like a little birthday surprise. But we did the hot air balloon and it cost 400 and change and 40. I think it was $440 yeah. total for the two of us to do that. Cappadocia hot air balloon. I would highly recommend it. It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, just make sure you're taking off in the valley around all the other balloons. You don't want to be like off to the side where you're like by yourself because it's cool to like look around and see all these balloons yeah. around you. So keep that in mind. But um, that threw our average off a ton. So we had been working it down to 131 and after Turkey, it went up to almost $136. Then we went right next door to Georgia, the country, and we were there for 28 days. 23. Sorry, 23 days. And this is another country that we thought, oh, we'll be under budget here. This was so high on our bucket list. I'm so glad we went. Okay, so now I'm actually realizing the countries that are really high on our bucket list that we visited, we wanted full freedom to do whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted, so we ended up renting cars. And not being in a rush while we were there too. And so that way we can decide if we want to stay somewhere longer or like go somewhere for sunrise or something like that. Um, and so the car rental, which was also really cheap, it was like what, $23 a day or something? Yeah, it was cheap because we did it, it was like a local rent, so it was through, it wasn't through like an agency, it was through like some guy met me at the airport and gave me his, his rental car. 
And it was like weirdly an American car. It had like Florida bumper stickers yeah, on like it. Like anyway, salt life sticker on it. Some of the roads driving through the little towns, like trying to get to our Airbnbs were very interesting. Yeah. But overall- There were some aggressive fun. drivers, but if you're paying attention, you're aware while you're driving, you're fine. The lines in the road were just suggestions for driving in Georgia. Yeah, no one was actually driving. Like if anything, every single car was more, yeah. more on the line than they were in the lane. Anyways. We spent $134 a day while we were in Georgia and that kept our running daily average flat at $135. Then after Georgia, we went to the US. We had two weddings. They were, they just happened to be the Friday in New York and then the Saturday afternoon in Chicago. And I think that was a big reason why we went back because they were back to back. So mm -hmm. we could knock out two at one time. We also used miles to fly back to the US. And after the two weddings, which were so rough because they were back to back, we went to stay with my parents for a week. And we used that week to kind of get caught up on planning, on rest, on everything. And it was really great for our budget because we just crashed at my parents' house and they fed us and everything. So we spent 16 days back in the United States and we averaged $106 while we were there. So this brought our average down to $133, which was down $2 after Georgia. And then New Zealand. We knew New Zealand's gonna be expensive. So with that in mind, we found a work exchange that was two weeks that covered food and lodging in exchange for working four hours a day, Monday through Friday, and we did this for two weeks. It was really cool. It was. We did it with Workaway, and it was World such Packers. a- World Packers. Oh. World Packers. Workaway, you can also do work exchange show too. <laughs> we did it with World Packers, and it was really cool. The couple we stayed with were so nice. They treated us like their grandchildren, yeah. and their grandchildren were also there, so we just like always got to hang out with them. I just feel bad because we weren't that good at like gardening and stuff, and I, I feel like they gave it- I mean, Peter did a lot. He cleaned the entire outside of their house. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was like no help because there were so many spiders and I was like, whoa. I, I just have a feeling- I'm sure they've had a higher caliber of workers than what me and Claire provided to them. I just have a feeling they gave us the easiest jobs. Yeah. Because they were like, oh my God, when are they leaving? <laughs> Our spend was pretty close to zero. We did do a tour um, on the weekend yeah. or something in between and that was really nice because the point of a work away thing is, or work exchange, whatever you want to call it, is that you get to do a little bit of traveling um, on and your off days. seeing the country, yeah. Oh, oh. And then so after that ended, we went down to South Island where we rented a car with a little tent on top and did a South Island road trip for 18 days. We really, really, really wanted um, a camper van. It's just like one of those bucket list items. You want to like experience van life and all that stuff. And then when we looked at the cost of the camper vans, we were like, absolutely not. Yeah. And so we ended up getting a Toyota RAV4 with a little like pop-up roof on top. And it ended up being so fun. Like it was good for us. You would think that by the end we were so ready to like stop camping after 18 days straight. And we, we could, think, we could have made it a month there, I, think I think we could have both stayed in it. It was just super comfortable. Something that was so awesome is we didn't have to unpack. Yes. And that was really nice because we're usually packing and unpacking like every two days. Yeah. So after 38 days in New Zealand, we averaged $109.76. And this brought our daily average down $3.5 to $130. And then this brings us to Australia where we currently are. And yes, Australia is another very expensive country. We did two and a half weeks of exploring um, and that ran up our daily average a ton. We don't have the numbers for Australia yet because we're still here. So I'm just gonna tell you like what we've been doing. But basically we did two and a half weeks of exploring. Now it's the Christmas, New Year's timeframe and we ended up finding a house sitting gig for four weeks. And this was perfect because we wanted to basically find kind of a home base for the holidays. We did not want to travel during this time. Um, and especially after watching like all the airport chaos that was going on during the holidays, I'm just like, this honestly worked out so well. So basically in exchange for watching Bingo- And their house. And their house while um, the family has gone on holidays in Europe for four weeks, we get free rent. And we probably would have gone back to the US for Christmas if it weren't for the weddings in October. Yeah basically, so it worked out. As of December 30th, which is day 304 of our world trip, our daily average was $131.
And that is the story of how we have been painfully over budget for 10 months straight. I will say you can travel on much less than we are traveling on. And the big thing is the travel days have been our most expensive days. So obviously slower traveling, less travel days. Less flights basically less, yeah. would have helped us a lot, even though we use a lot of miles. But, for long haul but for spending money, I will say the thing that we think we both agree on is the activities and experiences that we've spent that are a little more expensive have been a thousand percent worth it. Like I wouldn't yeah. change, I wouldn't change spending money on any of those experiences. You get what you pay for, yeah. always. And so we have roughly 60 days left, which is wild. Mm -hmm. And we have the Philippines after Australia and India after the Philippines. And basically we have an average that we need to hit in order to get our average down to 123 a day. Good job. Anything else you think? Um, that, right? Oh, we have on our website, I will link it somewhere. We have our entire world trip itinerary. So day by day where we've stayed and like what we've done and it's high we've level. linked certain places that we say that we really enjoyed or tours or whatever. Um, so that's that. And then the next tab on that same page is our expenses tab. Yep. And Peter has, I don't even know what you have. By there. country, by category how much we spend and also daily spend for each day, which is what daily spend means. And so you can check that out if you wanna make sure we are sticking to our budget and Peter updates it, I don't know, everyone, whenever he feels like yeah. <laughs> So sometimes it'll be like super up to date and sometimes- It could be a week or so. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, a it's week. not too bad. So if you wanna come along for the end of our- Year trip. Year long trip. And um, March 1st, 2023 is our day 365. And if you have any questions, you can ask Peter. Let us know. I'm happy to answer. Okay. Good job. See ya.